Good afternoon, everybody. I am Dr. Femi Skanes. I am the very proud principal of Morgan Park High School, located on the south side of Chicago. Um, and Morgan Park High School is a part of Chicago Public Schools. I am Heather Utsi. I am the principal of Haugen Elementary School, which is located on the north side of Chicago in the Albany Park neighborhood, which is one of the most diverse, interesting ports of new arrival for immigrants. And Femi and I are friends from opposite sides of the city and are excited to be with you today. Um, and so, you know, what, Heather, I was actually gonna say the same thing. So Heather and I uh, both have been, uh, in Chicago public schools for quite some time. I think we may have connected working on a conference together. Um, I just found out that even though I'm high school, she's elementary, um, that you know I'm on the south side of town, she's on the north side of town, that we just had some very similar paths. Um, and so we just connected and we have been friends ever since. So I am so excited to be here with, uh, with my friend Heather. And we were sharing with Arlen, believe it or not, um, the desire to put this presentation together actually came from a very general conversation that Heather and I were having on social media. And then we were like, you know what, um, maybe let's take this to the next level. And here we are, I'm um, talking about self-care, something that is very near and dear to both of our hearts. Um, Heather and I, you know, we're still practicing administrators and we understand, you know, the fatigue that can come along with leadership, but especially the fatigue that uh, many of us are just feeling having led pre-pandemic, during a pandemic, and hoping uh, that we're, we can soon be seeing post-pandemic. And so again, the title of this session today is, uh, But Who Cares for the Leader? All of the presentation slides are available for you all. Um, so Heather is dropping a link in the chat right now. So if you want to follow along, feel free. I'll advance the slides as we go along. But you all also can feel free to come back to these slides later if you want to do them with your leadership team or just reference them, share them with a friend, uh, what have you. Feel free to go back and uh, take a look at the slides later. Dr. Skeins, did you see there's a Morgan Park alum right there in the chat? So you're going to have to have your moment of pride. Uh oh, Heather, who is it? Janice Witzman. Hmm. Janice. Okay, I got to make sure that we connect. Hi, Janice. Um, so we have a few learning targets for this uh, workshop webinar. Uh, we can use all of those words interchangeably. So a few things. We want you all to to be able to learn to recognize the signs of leadership fatigue, okay? Um, are you able to identify before you burn and crash, um, which is something that is so important. Um, you know, I'm sad to admit that one of the ways that I've learned to recognize signs of leadership fatigue is as actually having to be at the hospital. Um, and so now I do everything possible to avoid ever having to go to the emergency room because I have just uh, stretched myself too thin. You will uh, learn strategies for addressing fatigue symptoms and how to develop realistic self-care routines. Um, so we will actually walk you through um, a plan for taking care of yourself. You're going to develop a plan of action for prioritizing self-care and really for replenishing energy to lead from a place of health rather than leading from a place of fatigue. And then we want you all to develop practices for leadership sustainability. Sustainability is so important to us because, you know, sometimes, and let's be honest, we're kind of getting beat up uh, in the media right now, getting beat up on social media, you know, being an educator, it's a tough time to be an educator right now, right? And so sometimes people don't always realize just how important we are. But the real, uh, the realistic part of this is we want we want to encourage you all to stay on this leadership journey. And the reason that that's so important is because stable leadership helps to stabilize schools. Schools help to stabilize communities, right? So whether people realize it or they don't realize it, leadership sustainability is so important because we're such vital parts of our communities. Um, so by the end of the session, you will walk away with a self-care action plan and strategies for high yield care practices. So we're gonna talk about it, but we are going to give you all some things that you all can actually take away. I got interested in this idea of self-care when um, a spiritual leader introduced me to this phrase, dangerously tired. I kind of knew the idea of 
being on empty and you need to take time to to do stuff for your for your self care but the phrase dangerously tired for me really pointed me at a level of exhaustion that's beyond just needing a nap or beyond just needing a weekend but being at that place of fatigue and emptiness where i am not leading well because i am depleted I do think, as Dr. Skane said, that the principal work is very uniquely complex. It is um, technically complex, the amount of systems we need to know, the amount of um, knowledge we need about our field, uh, the human capacity to navigate all the people who come across our path each day. And it is emotionally complex, how to stay self-regulated when you're dealing with all of that uh, that's happening in your building. The impact of who we are in the building is significant. Principals can set the tone and set the culture for the building, can change the tone and culture. And if it is well with you, it is going to be better in your building. And if it is not well with you, if you are leading from a dangerously tired place, your building will be impacted. So we're going to start with a tool, Dr. Skate, if you want to advance, which is a self-assessment. And I'm going to post uh, the link in the chat. You can use this Google form, although the truth is you won't be able to see your results. But the, the point of doing the filling in the Google form is it'll just let you rate yourself on how you are doing and whether you are leading from a place of being dangerously tired. So Dr. Skeens, you can go ahead and advance to the next one. I'm gonna just kind of read through the signs of leadership fatigue and ask you to rate yourself. So the first question is, do you get adequate sleep at night? From a scale of one, completely inadequate, you are not resting well to a 10. You are getting ample sleep most nights. I'm guessing few of us will be a 10, but where are you on the scale? The second question is a question about your general well being. Heather. Both, yep. Um, so you know what I'm I will read the questions really quick because um so that you can update the form because because they're uh, saying that they can only view it in the organization. So while you update the settings, I'll read through. Got it. Okay, I will I, do that. I, Thank you. Thank you all for calling that um, to our attention. So once again, one is we're not doing well, right, Heather? That's correct. And then 10 means that we have it on lock. So number one, or well, the first question, one is not good. How healthful are you eating? I'm so ashamed to be taking this today. How healthful are you eating? Okay, um, think about the foods that you're putting into your body, especially the foods that you're putting into your body while you're at work. Are you planning for what you're eating? Um, you know, I tell people all the time, working at a high school is tough because it's easy to consume junk food in a high school. Um, the next question. Um, if your work is life giving, I want we want you all to think about if your work is life giving, or if it's toxic to your soul. Heather, you ready to take it back? I cannot find the share settings on this That's, form, and I'm feeling I'm feeling guilty about that because I'm really good at Google, and I don't know why I can't find the share settings. That's okay. Heather and I are a good uh, tag team. So when we talk about uh, your work being life giving, do you find that your work is giving you energy? When you come into the workplace, are you excited to be there? Um, are you still happy to see kids? Are you still feeling ready to support teachers or do you feel toxic? Um, and, and I think that this is important for us to really uh, have honest conversations within ourselves, even if we don't verbalize it, right? So when we say toxic to your soul, um, do you dread teachers coming to your door to ask you a question? Are you tired of checking email? Um, do you find that the kids might be getting on your nerves more than they've gotten on your nerves in the past, right? And we're not talking about the normal things that kids do, you know, that you're like, wait, you've gone too far. But just them being kids, do you find that that's aggravating to you? So on a scale of one to 10, where would you rate yourself? Um, one life giving no, uh, yeah, one is uh, like really toxic or 10, when you go to work every day, you're still super excited and you're happy to be there. 
I, I got the share settings, so I'll, I'll take the volleyball back from you and I'll do that final one. It's really similar to what uh, Tina was saying for is work life giving. Um, are you satisfied with this kind of work? Um, or you just did that last one, right? You did that yeah. life giving? Okay. Yeah, is the work life giving or toxic to your soul? And then do you have a sense of satisfaction with your work? So give yourself a rating. Um, this is not scientific, but these are questions that point us in the direction of, are you doing well? Or are you operating from a place of being dangerously tired? And I share this picture that's on every airplane, these dorky, put on your own oxygen mask first before you try to help those around you. Um, I worked in a school once that had this um, painted on the wall in the teacher's Breathing oxygen and then a few minutes. Okay. Um, Heather, I think you might have just frozen. I'm All not right. sure if you um, All right. so let's let's go through that leadership slide one more time. Yeah, so I post this image of the oxygen mask on the airplane. The idea is you are not of help to those around you unless you are breathing well yourself. And I think that is a great analogy that you are not a good leader for a school unless you can breathe, unless you are getting um, sustenance and doing self-care so that you are in a stable, healthy place, and then you can lead well. I'll fuss with the survey while you take over. Perfect. So now we are going to talk to you all about something that Heather and I have uh, coined as conscious care. Um, if you have your phone, if you have a little post-it note, whatever you have, right, if you're just kind of listening and just jot this down just a little bit, we're going to talk about this idea of conscious care and what does that mean for you as a school leader. So care is an acronym and we're going to talk about what care means when we talk about conscious care for self-care. So the C, the C is for clear your mind. We want you to think for a minute, what are some ways that you can actually clear your mind? This work can consume you and you literally can keep thinking about the next thing and the next thing. And so for example, I can like right here in this moment, I can think about teacher observations. I can think about, um, we have a couple of award assemblies coming up. I have some major post-secondary things down the pipe. We're prepping up for budget season. Um, and then I'm also prepping up for my own evaluation. Those five things alone, and those are just a snapshot of things that I have to do. Those five things could keep my mind going and going and going and going, right? So I need to be conscious about what are some things that I can do to clear my mind? So for me, I'll give an example. Things that help clear my mind are, um, it's my meditation time at night. Um, I'm not an early bird. Some people, you know, meditate early in the morning. Me meditating early in the morning, that would just probably be me dozing off, right? But uh, for me, like I'm at my peak in the middle of the day or closer in the evening. So building in some meditation time helps me to clear my mind. Walking, not running because running is not, uh, it's not, it's probably healthcare. It's definitely not self-care for me, right? But walking will help me clear my mind. But here's a funny one. Um, it it kind of started off as a joke in my house, but I didn't even realize how much I needed this. So I'm not much into video games, but I do love Pac-Man and Miss Pac-Man. And so I just kind of sit on a whim. I saw a Miss Pac-Man game on Amazon. And so I said to my husband, I'm like, I would love a Pac-Man arcade game. And he said, he was like, first of all, that's a waste of money. That's kind of dumb, blah, blah, blah. So we joked about it, never really had another conversation about it. And so, uh, but for Valentine's Day, he actually surprised me with a customized Miss Pac-Man game. And, and so that has been my little way of clearing my mind. I come, I sit for 10 or 15 minutes. Uh, I play Miss Pac-Man at the end of a stressful day. And I did not even realize how much I needed to build in 
some time to just absolutely not be doing anything. So the first C that we have is we want you to think about what are some things that you can do to clear your mind. Another one that I do um, that, you know, some people might think it's a waste of time, but it's like my way to kind of just be away from the world of all of the things that I have to do is social media. Sometimes when I scroll on social media, it's literally just because it just helps me pass time and not be thinking about work in just that moment. Okay. So C, clear your mind. Heather and I want you to jot down one way that you could actually stop each day right? Because this is about intentional practices. We want you to think about what's an intentional practice that you can utilize to help you clear your mind. A, this is an important one. Arrange your calendar correctly. Schedule everything, including lunchtime, right? Um, some of us are better than others about eating breakfast, but if we had to do a show of hands and we talked about like, hey, how often do you skip lunch because you get so busy, you get so consumed with the day? We want you to have built-in time for lunch each day, okay? This is about taking care of yourself. I don't care how great we might be as school leaders, you're still human. You still need to do things like eat food <laughs> to keep your body going. There have been times when I have, push my body too far and I'm feeling exhausted at the end of the day and I literally go to eat food and I feel my blood sugar going back up like I've just depleted my body right so arrange your calendar so that you can build in lunch here's another thing we know uh we're we're <laughs> listen we're not those kind of people that are like oh you can just close the doors at 3 30 and go home works over we know that that's not the life of a school leader but we also know that you can keep going and going and going. So what we want you all to do is we want you to think about each week or each couple of weeks, what's going to be your late night in that particular week and stick to it. So for example, tonight is my late night um, and I have a big, um, uh, a big student assembly coming up, right? So I know I'm going to be here late. I can mark my calendar, but then that means that I need to be conscious about what days, what time I'm getting off on the other days. We want you all to think about like, what time does your day end? And end it, right? Give yourself permission to end your day at an appropriate time. You actually are not any more productive working long hours. Once you get to a point of just fatigue, you're not productive um, to keep doing that around the clock. We want you to think about how you arrange your calendar so that you are maximizing your time and maximizing your self-care. R, rest is rejuvenating. You know, I don't even know, we say that, right? And I hope there's a principal that's in my network of principals and she always says that she belongs to the nap ministry, right? She says naps like really, really get her through. But rest is rejuvenating. And so we wanna make sure that you all are getting an adequate amount of rest. So I'm gonna go back to that A. If you get off work at five o'clock, give yourself permission to get off work. Getting off work at five o'clock does not mean shoveling food in your mouth and then going home working another five hours every day. You may have to do that sometimes, but give yourself permission to rest when you get home. Spend time with your family. Eat dinner with your family. Talk to the people that you love the most. Spend some time with your friends. Um, allow yourself time to have rest. I'm going to tell you all, Heather, you're going to be proud of me, but how I put this in practice just today. I have been um, extremely, extremely busy. Um, we had a major announcement to come out of our school yesterday. We are planning for that. I have, um, tonight I have to be here late for my student award assemblies. I have just been running on autopilot. I have three amazing assistant principals. And I said to my APs, I'll be in a little later today. I did the start work at my normal 7.15. Um, you know, normally if I have to be at 7 or 8 o'clock at night, I'm still here at 7, 7.15 in the morning. Today I got to work at 9 o'clock. I trusted that my assistant principals had it held together, right? One person, if one person can make the school fall apart, then that's like a whole nother leadership PD that Heather and I need to talk to you all about, right? For two hours, this school can sustain 
me not being here. And I, that's just what I did. I felt myself tired and fatigued. I knew I had to be ready to, tonight. So I said, you know, if I got to be here to eight o'clock tonight, then let me come in at nine o'clock. I really could have pushed it to about 10 o'clock, but I figured, hey, I'd be fair because one of my other APs is out, right? But the point is, I felt that I needed some rest and I had to give myself just an extra hour. I didn't want to be rushing out the door this morning. So I rested. You got to figure out how you can get build some real rest time in before the rest that you're getting is in a hospital. And, 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 and we're being very serious, right? Like sometimes you end up resting because you have worn your body down to the point of fatigue and exhaustion and you find yourself in the emergency room and then the rest that you get is in the hospital. We are trying to avoid that. And we are trying to really, really make sure that we are building in some time for rest. And then here's another one that we don't necessarily think about as self-care, but it is definitely a form of self-care and it's engaging other people in the work. And when we say engaging other people in the work, we're talking about building the capacity of other people in your building. You may have great ideas, you may be a visionary, but you cannot be the visionary and the executor of every great idea that comes in your head. So we want you to think about how you build the capacity of other people to help you all in the work. And then we want you to think about appropriate delegation. Now, I will warn you all that we have to also be careful that, and if we're honest, Teachers are feeling burned out too. So we have to be careful to delegate things that are appropriate to teachers because I am a little bit concerned that we're putting so much on teachers' plates that they're getting away from actually teaching, right? And so we want to do appropriate delegation. But you know, sometimes we underutilize our support staff. Think about some other ways that our support staff can help us. And so maybe you have a teacher who's really smart, really strong and can get it done, maybe a little bit better than a support staff. That could be possibly true, but your support staff will never get better if we don't train them and if we don't give them opportunities to help out in the school building. So part of your self-care plan is engaging other people in the work and getting some people that can actually help you. Because when we engage other people in the work, what you'll find is it also builds community, right? When we build community, people are happier together. When people are happier together, then we're not, you know, we're not developing these toxic workplaces. So conscious care, C, clear your mind. A, arrange those calendars and stick to them, right? And, and a whole nother PD, Heather, maybe we'll take this one on the road, right? But the art of no, everything can't fit on your calendar. Sometimes the answer just has to be no, I, I'm sorry. I would love to be there because sometimes I'll let kids stretch me too thin. Okay, I'll be at your game. I'll be at this volleyball. No, and sometimes I have to say no, doctor such and such is gonna be there at that one, right? Um, arrange your calendars, get you some rest, and then E, engage other people in the work. That is conscious care. So Dr. Skaggins, you inspired me with your acronym because I always aspire to that, but I'm going to frame my sharing about self-care around mindset and then what you do in the school and what you do out of the school. So let's start with mindset. I included this picture of Mulan because I have a very freakish fascination with Mulan. I just have admired her for 20 years and have watched the new action movie way too often. Um, I think there's something about martial arts, even though I don't practice them, that is really all about having your mind in a steady, calm place so that no matter what comes at you, you are really in this peaceful, zen place which you know that's not what school leadership feels like a lot, but you are at your best when the circus is going on around you and you are actually able to be calm and see the big picture. So this photo of Mulan sort of cracks me up because who has hair this nice in the middle of a battle? But um, her face really is a place of utter calm while this battle is going on around her. And um, that is the mindset that we need to have at leadership, that we have to still be able to see clearly, to see the horizon, to see the vision, to see where we're going, and to see above the fray so that we can be good leaders. A leadership coach said to me, 
you're better at leading when you have nothing on your to-do list and nothing other than to be out watching, thinking your most valuable thing you bring into school leadership is your brain. So you need to have your brain free to see and to observe and to know and to lead and to, to see the problems or to see the solutions. That mindset also reminds me of this older um, Harvard article from the 1990s, which many of us read in grad school about the monkeys. Um, I will post a link to the article, but the idea is that as leaders, many times other people come into our office and bring a problem to the, to the office or to the leaders of the school and then walk away expecting you to take the solution to that problem. I actually keep this little tiny monkey by my door uh, on a shelf by my book, by my main door of my office to remind me that I don't have to take all the monkeys off your back and solve all your monkey problems. I, as the leader, can listen and then direct you how to take your monkeys out of the office and you can go have the conversation or you can find the solution. I don't have to be the one who takes all the to-do lists or all the the monkeys on your back and solve all those problems. So that mindset of I need to be clear-minded, I need to be peaceful, and I need to be in a good mindset so that I can lead the school. I think it's all about the mindset. So the mindset for me, um, the battle is often around um, the email inbox and the calendar, that I literally need to plan those things out. So just as Fumi talked about planning your day and, um, organizing your calendar accordingly. Like you have to have time in your day where you're not doing the emails and you're not dealing with the things the secretary is dealing with. You are out in the school or doing the big picture planning that you need to do or the leadership. So the mindset is important. And for me, this image, these couple of images uh, really help remind me that my mindset needs to be clear. And that's, a, that's, a, that's an important part of self-care that I'm not caught up in the fray. The next area of self-care that I wanna talk about is stuff you can do during your work day to make you a healthier leader. So this is a photo of where I'm standing right now. I'm standing where this rolling chair is. I push it out of the way when I stand up. But um, what you can't see in the corner of the photo is I keep a little fridge and a microwave in my office because otherwise the food won't happen. Bought myself the stand up desk. Uh, actually, Dr. Skates is the one who cued me in. It is worth the money to get the big monitor. It helps us get the work done. Even the little prop for my laptop, just the things that I need so that I can be comfortable and not have the hunched over um, stress in my back and my shoulders that I had in my old work arrangement. This is a couple hundred dollars worth of stuff. I even have a rubber mat that I'm standing on. These little things are ways to care for myself, to help move the stress out of my body. And I feel better when I go home at the end of the day, because I've taken that little bit of self-care. As Dr. Skates mentioned, scheduling time for lunch. I'm busted today. I did not schedule time for lunch. I was meeting all through lunch. Wolfed down some food in the 15 minutes before we started this meeting. But on my best days, I plan time for lunch. I have it right here. Um, and I, I, um, I need those things to keep myself replenished during the day. Most of you on this call know what it means to not even have a chance to go to the bathroom during the day. You have to get up and get out of the office to take care of yourself and your body. And you know what, even if I can chime in with that, you know, thinking about eating lunch, something that uh, I find to be really beneficial official that I had at my last school that just because of school structure, I just don't have it at this school. Um, I had a really good assistant at my last school and she was relentless about making sure that I had lunch on the calendar. She just did not let people have access to me. Um, during my lunch and then we would joke all the time if I was getting really cranky she would never say you're cranky she would say what do you want for lunch and that would make me giggle because then I would know like okay my disposition must be changing right but she would always help me to stay on track so this is something that maybe you know whether it's your secretary your school assistant the person that helps you administratively like have an honest conversation with them like you need them to be the gatekeeper on uh on lunch and so you know sometimes we may have somebody working in that front office who's really nice and they'll let, let people slide past you but no you deserve to be able to eat lunch again it seems like such a little thing but it's really such an important part of maintaining your overall health and your overall health plays into your overall self-care plan. 
So thank you. Heather, I did notice that you were eating lunch late, but I was going to let you slide. <laughs> I, I'm just going to build. Like, you can go back one slide back to the inside of the workday. I'm going to build on what you said about the assistant. I my best secretary I worked with. She's moved on to be a school psychologist because she's really good at this stuff. I, I I joined a spiritual retreat program where once a quarter I would take a vacation day and go do this retreat. And in Chicago, principals don't get the whole summer off, so we can sort of use our vacation days strategically. And I had decided this was going to be a good thing, but I felt guilty. And when I came back, she's like, oh God, you are a nicer person when you go on those retreats. Please keep going. Just sign it. Let's sign, can I sign you up for the next quarter? So somebody just within the school who cares about your well-being and can have your back and say it is worth her doing this because she's a better person when she comes back to the building. So let's go to that next slide outside of the workday. I, um, I know that it is easy to get caught up in the things that have to get done because there's never enough time during the school day. We prioritize the kids, the teachers, the parents, and then the things like the emails and the strategic plans and the budgets get piled up in our evenings and our weekends. But to really care for ourselves, we have to make sure that we have things outside of the work day that give us full spirit. So Phoebe, I'm laughing at your Miss Pac-Man. I'm going to come over someday and um, play your game with you. But this is a picture of Osterman Beach in Chicago, which I discovered during the pandemic. Um, I go every Sunday, most of the year in January and February, I don't go in the colder weather. I walk on the beach for an hour. And then in the starting about May, I dip in the water and I, I swim on Sunday mornings in uh, June, July, August, September, even into October. I cannot take a cell phone into Lake Michigan. And that time at the beach is so restorative to my soul. I, I do a workout every morning for an hour and I can't believe I can find an hour, but it is like my meditation time. It's on a mat in my living room. And I, um, I start my day better. My body feels better. My spirit feels better when I have that in place. I have systems in place around kid care. Oh my God, kid care. For those of you who like me still have a young child at home, my elementary age daughter, like I have to have that in place so that I can be more present in my school day. So I've even done creative things. I, I found a young college student who lived with me for a year and helped me. She would pick up my daughter every day after school. She was like a live-in nanny. I gave her a free room so that she could just help me with walking the dog, pick up the kid, get some things ready for dinner. Anything you can do, if it's a meal prep service or ordering um, food from a restaurant that you just don't have to cook for a few days, whatever you can do outside of the workday that leaves you feeling refreshed, renewed. Um, every Friday at 5.15, I meet my girls for a happy hour. And it's, it's almost like a, a religious commitment. I am there. Uh, it gets me out of the school on Fridays. I look forward to it every Friday. They're my COVID bubble that I rode through the COVID bubble with. And uh, I have things outside of school that are giving me life and identity. And it's not all about being a principal. I am a principal. My heart is here. This is my life's work. But I'm also glad that in some places I'm just a swimmer or I'm just a lady who meets with my friends or I'm in a book club. Um, those things also fill up my spirit and my soul. So my mindset, what I do inside the workday, what I do outside the workday, that's all part of caring for your soul as a leader. And you know what, Heather, building off of that point outside of the workday. So my um, one of the major parts of my self-care plan was every single Friday, um, every now and then a Saturday, but most of the time, every single Friday, I would get off work at a decent time and I would go to the beauty shop um, for a bunch of reasons, right? But what I realized, is I went to the beauty shop because it was fun. It was a place where I could hang with other women. We would just, you know, talk about life, children, husbands, you know, world topics. I love going to the beauty shop. I never really watched the clock in there um, because it was more like hanging out with a group of friends. And so um, last summer, I had this idea to cut all of my hair off, which I did, and I love it. And it saves me a lot of time. But you know, I realized I missed the beauty shop. The right? beauty shop. <laughs> I miss the beauty shop. I miss being in there on Friday nights, just hanging out with my girlfriends. So, you know, Heather is absolutely right. Just 
it's the idea of, you know, what do you do outside of the workday? And what we're saying is give yourself permission to be somebody else other than principal such and such or doctor such and such, right? Like yeah. you are more than just a school leader. And if you forget that part of yourself, it, it really can drain you so thin. And there's another thing that we have to consider outside of the workday is sometimes um, we have to work with our families. I, you know, I train new principals a lot. And one of the things that I talk to them about is one of the, um, a major conversation that you have to have is with your significant other or your spouse when talking about the role of being a school leader. They have to be able to support you they have to understand the role um and just the demand on your time and so you know and it took a, it took some time but one of the things that I had to help my family understand is um when you all start getting out of school or like my husband is getting off work if you, that happens during my school dismissal and so it was very frustrating when my phone would start ringing at the same time I'm trying to dismiss kids and so they thought that I was being rude or I was being short and I'm like no we have to recalibrate the time of day that you all call me so give me until this time that was one thing seems little but it's a big thing because you don't want to be at odds with your family another one I need 15 minutes probably really 30 before you all start talking to me when I come in the house. So now, and you know, my last kid is off to college. So, you know, it's a little bit better, but we had an understanding. I come in, I take a shower. I put on comfortable clothes. When that happens, then I'm ready to talk. If you start talking to me before I go through that process, my mind has not shifted enough from the workday, right? So think about like how you're utilizing your time and how you're engaging your family in that conversation. Hey, once I have on my fleece pants and my t-shirt, now I'm ready to talk, okay? So we're gonna uh, pop up a few quotes that we wanna talk you all through. Um, and then we're asking, I'm going to go through the quotes and then I'm going to go through the quotes again. And I want you to find a quote that resonates with you. Write it down somewhere so that you can come back to it. So this is just a, a few quotes that we're providing that will help you with your self-care plan. Number one, never forget this, okay? This is my Angelo. As you grow older, you will discover that you have two hands, one for helping yourself and the other, the other for helping others. So two hands, one for helping yourself and one for helping others. That is so important because sometimes we use both of our hands to help everybody else. We keep giving and giving and giving. And actually the very thing that makes most of us good educators is the same thing that, that makes us horrible at self-care. And it's because we keep using both of our hands to give and using both of our hands to give. And so we are not using one of our hands to take care of ourselves, and then using the other hand to take care of others. Next quote. Nourishing yourself in a way that helps you blossom in the direction that you want to go is attainable and you are worth the effort. My favorite part of that is you are worth the effort. Sometimes we take on so much from our kids and our families and our community and our staff, right? That sometimes we're like, I can't even focus on me because we can feel a little bit guilty. Heather, you hit the nail on the head. You felt guilty taking time for yourself. Repeat after me. You are worth the effort, okay? It's okay to take care of yourself. Let's keep going. Another one. Um, an empty lantern provides no light. Self-care is the fuel that allows your light to shine brightly. Okay. An empty lantern provides no light. When you are empty, you may be at work, but you're probably not, you're not really giving up much light. Okay. You might be taking in all of the oxygen because you are depleted. Now, I told you all social media is part of my self-care plan, right? So I saw this on social media one day. A dead battery cannot jump a dead battery. When your car needs to be jumped, you go find a car that has a working battery. If you go get another junk car, you all will just be two junk cars together, okay? So if you are functioning like a dead battery, 
then you are not providing the energy that you need to help your school um, really be a healthy school community and climate. I'm going to run through those again. And I just want you to write down the one that resonates with you. Let you read them. And remember, you have access, so you can always go back to all of them. If you wouldn't mind, just dro drop in the chat one, one line or one part of a quote, one of those quotes that resonates with you. Which one of those quotes just kind of jumped out at you? Two hands, I love it. A dead battery, the dead battery, two hands. Yeah, that, two hands for sure. Yeah, that's one that really stuck with me. Nourishing yourself. Thank you, Ann. I love that, Matthew. You've been taking it to the next level. Surrounding yourself with negativity. Negativity can definitely be energy draining. Okay, so now we want to talk about, we promised you all a plan. So for right now, you could just take a picture. You can jot this down on a piece of paper. We have something called a CARES plan, okay? A CARES self-action plan. So we talked about CARE. But then we are going to call this the CARES plan. What we want you all to do is we want you to think about um, and just pick two areas, okay? So we're not perfect beings. And we're not saying that you're going to do all of this every day. But we want you all to be conscious about at least walking away with two things that you can do. So pick two areas that you want to focus on. And then give us a specific step that you will take to do it. So I gave you all a step. Um, and this is one that I'm actually not only going to continue to do for myself, but I'm going to talk to my APs about doing this. On our late nights, I'm going to start shifting our schedule that, that they, we're also coming in a little bit later on those days. That's my rest. That's my R. The step that I'm going to take is utilizing late arrival. Okay. How am I going to know that it's working? Because we're going to do some self-assessments. We're going to talk about like, how does that help us? Like, do we feel more energized? I want you all to pick two areas. And the S is if you have another strategy, okay? We've given you all four. Heather also gave us inside the workplace. She gave us outside the workplace. She gave us mindset. So really we've kind of given you all seven strategies. We want you all to think about what steps will you actually take to do it? The monkey. Yes, the monkey. And yeah, then- I need to post that link to that Harvard article. And then how will you know that it's working? Okay, this is the self-care action plan. Again, even if you don't write it down, I suggest writing it down because writing it down holds us account to our own accountability. But if nothing else, take a picture of it. And again, you have the slides. Now, Heather is going to talk us through some additional resources. So uh, these are some resources that have really supported me that I want to recommend for further reading. This book by Ruth Haley Barton called Strengthening the Soul of Your Leadership is what really opened my eyes to this concept of being dangerously tired and not wanting to lead from that place. And what do I need to do to not be dangerously tired? The second book that has changed my life is a book by Tony Schwartz, The Power of Full Engagement, Managing Energy, Not Time, is the Key to High Performance and Personal Re Renewal. So uh, Tony Schwartz and his crew, um, I believe their story is that they were coaches for Olympic level athletes and then transferred those principles over to business leaders that you have to manage your energy. It's not just your time management, it's that mindset piece of what do you have to do with your body, your mind, your spirit, so that you can really be fully engaged at work. So 
So for me, even one little example from this book, the things I snack on during the day matter. If it's high protein or not, yeah, I, I'm better. I'm a better leader when I have protein snacks. Third resource uh, actually uh, is a uh, professional development training uh, by Malachi Pankos called the Breakthrough Coach. It is worth every penny. Um, he comes around different parts of the United States and does this training. Um, some things I admire about him is he makes you park your cell phone for the whole two days you're with him, which every principal I know just about loses their mind leaving your phone. And the second day of the training, they have you bring your secretary or whoever your right hand is to learn the principles of being a good leader and um, doing the self-care and managing your time and your mindset. And they train your secretary so that then she bosses you around and makes sure that you do it. Um, and I, I just can't speak highly enough of this training. It's worth the money. The last uh, resource, I think Brene Brown is doing an amazing leadership podcast. Um, I often listen to them when I work out. She has two different podcasts. This Dare to Lead podcast, she interviews different leaders. And I find her questions get at some of these topics of self-care, like how do you sustain yourself for this hard level of work? And how do you do the renewal? Or how do you make sure that you lead from a good place? So the wide variety of leaders she interviews from so many different sectors really um, is, is a beautiful piece of podcasting that I think will, it, it falls right in line with this caring for yourself as a leader. And so we want to remind you all, take care of yourself, okay? Um, and, and think about this umbrella that we have here. These self-care strategies are ways that we want to help you pr protect yourself from the storm, okay? So think about these strategies um, as a way to keep you cover from the rain it doesn't mean that you the wind won't blow and that you won't get a little bit wet right but we know you get a little wet but we're trying to stop you from getting drenched again we're not saying that stress won't come but what we're trying to what we want to make sure that we do is we want to have proactive strategies for managing we don't want you all to come up with this when you have just burned out and fizzled out um i am going to also drop another link in the chat this is um, an article that I actually, uh, not an article, um, what do you call those little things? Heather, what's the word? <laughs> I'm like, not an article. A blog. 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 Okay. So this is a blog that I actually wrote for ASCD on self-care. So it just extends the topics just a little bit. We suggest to not only do you all use these things for yourself, um, but think about how you can use it with your leadership team. Think about how you can share some of these strategies with um, some of your fellow school administrators. If Heather and I have not done anything today, we are just giving you all a reminder that we want you all to take care of yourself. We want our colleagues to be healthy, um, emotionally healthy, spiritually, mentally, and physically. So the answer is, but who cares for the leader? The, uh, well, the question is, but who cares for the leader? And the answer has to be yourself. OK, you have to be conscious about caring for yourself because we just want to remind you all that you are worth it. Um, you can find Heather and I. Um, in fact, Heather, I'll, um, you know what, Heather, drop a slide in if you don't mind. Well, let's just add our um, contact information on a second slide. So that way, the, if anybody wants to contact me or Heather, if you have any questions, like we really are very supportive people. So that's how we connected with one another. So we're happy to answer any questions for you all. So again, we just want to thank you all for uh, being here with us. Um, and, and taking the time, like professional development is actually part of like a holistic self-care plan too, right? Like developing yourself as a leader and as a learner. So thank you all for spending um, just shy of an hour with us on, but who cares for the leader? Again, take care of yourselves. Arlen, we're turning it back over to you, but we're happy to stay around and take questions or anything else. Wonderful. Well, thank you both so much for sharing these strategies with our participants today. We do have plenty of time for Q&A, so if you want to type your question into chat, feel free to do that now uh, while we still have our two presenters online with us. 
If you'd like to share something out verbally or ask your question on the microphone, hover down at the bottom of your screen and click the raise hand icon. That will let me know that you are ready to share out on the mic and I can allow you to unmute um, yourself. But please feel free to type your questions for our two presenters into the chat at this time. I still have the recording going. We'll be sending that out tomorrow as, long, as, as well as an evaluation, um, which once that's completed, you'll get your ISB evidence of completion form for one professional development clock hour if you attended the full one hour presentation with us this afternoon. Okay, we had a good question here from Sean that says he likes the idea of starting your day late when you have long days. Any suggestions for those of us who do not have APs? So, um, Sean, I think that that is an amazing question, right? Sean, if you had an emergency in your family and you had to be off work for a day, who would be in charge in the building? All right, so when you think about whoever that person would be if you had to to be out sick, then that same person can be in charge if you need to be in late for an hour or two. We sometimes in Chicago, if there's a teacher in the building who holds a type 75, we just alert them that they need to be on standby. I've also been out of my building and just told all the key people I can be reached by cell phone, but hopefully you don't have to. But if you know the ambulances are here in the fire department and some, some and you need me, call me. And I, I just, I, I put in the hours outside of school. It's okay to come in late occasionally. I've also learned when you go to a workshop somewhere and it finishes at two o'clock, don't go back to the vortex. No. Take yourself right to the beauty shop. <laughs> or to actually eat. Or to the grocery store or to go lay down. <laughs> yes. All right, any other questions from our audience here, feel free to type into chat. Uh, we'll make sure your questions get answered or ra raise your, <clears throat> excuse me, raise your hand and I can unmute your microphone. Yes, Teresa, that's really a good suggestion. And you know, uh, one of the reasons is that um, again, that's going back to that uh, developing capacity, right? We talked about the care and one of the things that we talked about with our care plan is how we engage other people in the work. So engaging other people in the work is having somebody else that can pick up the slack. So developing teacher leadership. Sometimes you have really amazing teachers who have really strong leadership skills. They just don't wanna do this every day. They can take a day or two, you know, to help you out, but they don't want to take it on full time. So uh, utilize their skills, um, you know, occasionally. I've also had extreme emergencies. I've just alerted my chief or my nearby principal, like, hey, just be on standby. You know, like if I had a kid in the hospital, things like that. Like, I'm just really, really offline today because of whatever. And sometimes say to people, I need to be gone from this chunk of time. Do not disturb me unless it is an um, extreme crisis. So if I have to be out of the building um, for something, you know, especially health related, I'll say to my APs, like I really am offline today. Um, only contact me in extreme emergency and they're okay with that they know if it's something major they can shoot me a quick text and if I find that it's important I'll call in and then I have a rhythm with my APs now I have three of them right so I kind of chuckle because I also have three kids and they have all have very different personalities but at the end of the day I check in with each of my APs right so I still find out what happened that day um we still calibrate with each other and yet I was able to you know accomplish what I need to get accomplished. Well, remember the quote, you're worth it. You deserve some time. You can't just keep burning the candle at both ends.
Yes, Rob, you are absolutely right. Rob, my uh, my youngest child is getting ready to graduate from high school. And I looked at the calendar and I'm putting his, you know, his senior dates on the calendar. Uh, sorry, guys, I won't be at work those days. So again, um, thank you you all so much for joining we're happy to have you all and i am going to completely turn it back over to arlen arlen i can stay heather and i can stay for a couple more minutes if there are questions but if not we will see you all around safe happy and healthy and leading <laughs>